Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Twelve here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Type 10. The Type 10 is a 4th generation main battle tank of the Japanese Self-Defense Force, produced by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries for the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force, entering service in 2012. Compared with other currently serving main battle tanks in the uh, JGSDF, the Type 10 has been equipped with enhancements in its capability to respond to anti-tank warfare and other contingencies. The Type 10 here is kind of the peak tank of the Japanese military. Um, it is the top of the line, I guess, front line tank you would have. Um, it's pretty cool and obviously a very modern looking tank and all that stuff and really there isn't really too much to go into it. Uh, like many, many uh, main battle tanks, it incorporates the 120mm main gun as well as um, some secondary or weapons with the coax machine gun and also an optional uh, mount up on top near the commander's cupola for a machine gun as well. So pretty cool looking uh, tank here and uh, quite a beefy one um, nonetheless. So should be an awesome addition to um, any of your worlds for a Japanese um, ground uh, vehicle and uh, this tank has been requested for quite some time so I am happy to finally deliver that tank to all of you that have been requesting it and hopefully you all do enjoy the build. Before we go ahead and jump in and take a look at this build though I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do feel free to check out my Patreon page link is down in the video description where you can pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do with my channel is really greatly appreciated so definitely feel free to check that out again link is down in the video description. With that though, let's dive in here and take a look at the Type 10. So, again to start with, we have the main gun here, obviously the 120mm gun. Uh, we then have the size of the tank here, most of the tracking and all that stuff is covered up with uh, panels, so that's what we have on the side here. Uh, the turret itself got kind of the front sloped armor, nothing too crazy, some really kind of integrated, interesting smoke grenade dispensers, so they're kind of integrated in with the turret, which is pretty cool. Um, we then have uh, a lot of the little optics, the commander's cupola, again, little camera located here on the back, as well as that um, machine gun that's mount mounted up on top here, which is just a standard 50 caliber type gun. We then have uh, various detail in here on the back, all the little hatches and stuff like that for um, the back of the tank here, or for the turret, and then we have radio antenna, the little rack on the back to basically put gear in or whatever. And as we approach the rear of the tank here, we have obviously the vents here for the engine, brake lights, nothing really too fancy. And um, that's pretty much the tank. It's a pretty simple, straightforward tank. I mean, it's a main bell tank, which they all kind of start to blend together after doing so many, but really cool tank. And um, again, we haven't done too many Japanese modern vehicles, so it's definitely nice to revisit the country and build a basically their top of the line uh, main bell tank as of right now. Um, with that though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. Alright guys, moving into our first layer here, we have layer number one. For layer one, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down two narrow brick slabs like this across, followed by two narrow brick top slabs coming off those slabs going forward. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of two of polished black stone stairs, followed by a second row right behind this, and then another row of two of stairs, and then another row right behind it. And we're just going to go ahead and kind of continue this, going back, until we have a total of five of these rows of two of back to back stairs like that. So again we have, should have one, two, three, four, and five of those groupings. We're going to go then place down two narrow brick slabs and then we're going to follow this up with two narrow brick top slabs here on the very end. After that is all complete we're going to go ahead and then go to the front here. We're going to go off this narrow brick slab. We're going to place down three dark oak top slabs over from it. And then on the back here we're going to go off this narrow brick top slab and we're going to place down three dark oak top slabs over from that as well. We then want to just fill the inside in with dark oak with top slabs, so this is just going to kind of close off the um, basically bottom here of the tank and connect it to each other, both sides to each other like this across. So again, we're just going to fill this in like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down two narrow brick slabs here, then two narrow brick top slabs, cut off those slabs going forward. We're going to go ahead and place down two polished blocks downstairs and there are two here, and we're just going to go ahead and repeat the same track design we do over on the other side, just over here to this side. So again, same thing on both sides here, like that. And then our two narrow brick slabs, and our two narrow brick top slabs. 
So when it comes to the banners we have on the side of the tank here, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to be going ahead and basically making these two banners. Now I'm not going to show you guys how to make them in a loom because they're really simple and pretty straightforward to do. But basically all we're going to do is we're going to take a black banner, we're going to go and split, or we're going to take two black banners. One side is going to have green on the left, or on the right side, and the other one's going to have green on the right left side. So you should have these two banners here. We're going to go then do a black horizontal line through the center of both banners, and then a black, or sorry, rather the dark gray line across the top. And once you have that done, you'll very simply just go ahead and go to your stairs here. And you're just going to go ahead and place them like this on the side of the stairs with the green facing toward each other. And you're going to go ahead and basically do this for the entire length here of the tracks. And it's going to kind of help form up the side there. And we're going to go and do the same thing over here as well. So just like this along the side. And make sure that green is facing toward uh, one another on both sides there. After that is all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up everything we have uh, for our first layer here, layer number one. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer, which will be layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down two green terracotta blocks here, an item frame on the side, cobweb, and a dark oak button on the side there of that block. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well, so just like that. We then want to go ahead and fill in the inside here with mossy cobblestone walls. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of three across like so, as well as two polished blackstone walls coming off the side of those blocks going forward. We're also going to place down item frames on these two blocks and trip our hooks in those item frames and we're going to go ahead and rotate so the, the um, trip our hooks are facing downwards. After that is all done, we want to go ahead and then uh, take our green terracotta and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five going across the space like so. We're going to follow this up with a polished blackstone upside down stair on both ends and coming off that stair, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak sign. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well like that. Once we have that all complete, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some gray concrete. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 gray concrete blocks back. Same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can then go ahead and take our gray concrete and we can just fill the inside in here. If you do want to do a bit of interior for the build, um, you're more than welcome to leave some of the space open to do an interior. However, for this tutorial, we will not be doing a interior, so just keep that in mind. Um, so that's why we were filling this in completely. And so yeah, this is going to get filled in like so. Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a polished blackstone button on the side of this block. And we also want to place down a polished blackstone on the side here of the second block from the front. So same thing will be done over here, that second block, and then that very last block back here. We're going to place down there a polished blackstone upside down stair to both sides here. This is going to be followed with a row of five of green terracotta across the center. And a dark oak with sign there on the side of these polished blackstone stairs. After that is done, we're going to then place down a row of seven of green terracotta across, this time an item frame on both ends. And like we did in the front, we're going to place down a cobweb, and if you're on Java, a dark oak wood button, or rather, actual dark oak wood button, on the side of this block as well. Just a little side note, I don't know if I mentioned it up on the front there, but it, on Java, you're able to place down item frames and buttons, um, as, long as, as well as signs, in the same block space as one another. Um, unfortunately though, for other versions, such as Bedrock or uh, Block Edition, you are not able to place down those two blocks in the same block space, so you have to pick and choose between the two. I would always recommend probably placing the item frame over whatever we have, the button or the sign, as the item frame is going to give you a little bit more detail on the build. So for Bedrock players, it's going to look like this. For Java players, we can do this. After that though, we're going to go ahead and take our another brick stairs, and we're going to place it on a row of two, coming off the two sides here, like so. And we then want to place down a dark oak sign here, on the side of this near brick wall as well. And after we have that done, we want to go ahead and also place down a cobweb in this side so don't make sure to, uh, or make sure you don't forget to transfer that over as well. Now across this center space here, uh, we want to go and take our green terracotta. We're going to place down a row of three across, and we want to go ahead and place down a row of three of dark oak top slabs. Once that's done, we're going to take our polished black stone, we're going to place down one and two up down stairs, and one and two up down stairs here. After that is done there, we want to go ahead and also place down a row of dark oak trap doors. Going across those dark oak top slabs like that for the back there. And after that is all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up everything we have there for layer number two. Um, Taking a look at it from above, this is what we should have for the top down view so far for this um, build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer 3 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and take our daylight detectors and we're going to place down our row 7 that goes all the way across this space like so. We then want to place down a zombie head coming off these two daylight detectors as well as a item frame coming off these two here and then in those item frames we're going to place down snowballs like so. And that'll do it there for the front. 
We then want to go ahead and take our dark oak weed slabs, which we'll go ahead and grab some now. And we're going to place down a row of seven of dark oak wood slabs all the way across this space, like so. Now at this point here, we want to go ahead and then place down a dark oak wood slab going back on the right side. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a piston here. Now you're going to place the piston here if you are a Java player. If you are not on Java, um, a good alternative to this would be to go ahead and use the end stone portal frame um, block instead. And then to the side of this, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five dark oak wood slabs over. We're going to go ahead and place down a green terracotta block back from that piston, as well as a piston here to the right side, and a piston to the, um, or actually rather, sorry, not a piston to the left, to the left side, it's actually going to be a stair, like that. We're going to go ahead and place down a smoker block in that space there, as well as another dark oak wood stair, and then two pistons over to the side here. And again, the pistons can be substituted for end portal frames. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of green terracotta going across. This is going to be a row of seven. And we can also take our polished blackstone and place down a button here on the side of this block, like so. And same thing over here on the side of the piston or the end portal frame. We're going to go ahead and take our green terracotta. We're going to go back along the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten blocks. And uh, actually one more, so eleven. And same thing over here. We're going to go ahead and just go back eleven green terracotta blocks. And after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and fill in the space in between here and we're just going to go ahead and fill in the space here in general so we're just going to go ahead and get this completely filled in just like this and this is going to basically create a nice uh, full look here for the build again you can leave some of the space open if you do want an interior after we have uh, that all done there we want to go ahead and then take our black concrete and we're going to place down our row of three across the back here We'll also go ahead and grab ourselves some ladders, um, which can be found here. And we're going to go ahead and place down ladders coming off the side of these blocks here going back. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall to both sides, followed by an item frame. In that item frame, we're going to go ahead and place down our red bed. And we want to rotate the item frame so that the bed pillow is facing toward the middle of the vehicle. So it's going to look like that on uh, both sides there. And we're going to go and then grab ourselves a dark oak wood sign, and we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign over the side there of that block as well for Java players. After that is all done there, we want to go ahead and then take our dark oak wood trap doors. We're going to place down a trap door here on the side of this uh, sign here, and also on the side of this block right here. And same thing will be done over here on this side. So just like that on both sides there. We also want to go and grab our polished blackstone buttons. We're going to place down one button up from this one, and then one back, and we're going to do the same thing over here on this side one up and one back and once we have that all done right there that is going to wrap up everything there is there for layer number three again here is a view from up above of what it should look like so far from a top down view anyways though that is going to conclude layer number three for the build and with that we'll be going ahead and moving on up to layer number four moving into our next layer we have layer number four for layer four to begin with we're going to go ahead and take a green terracotta we're going to place down a row of three that goes across this space here we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak up down stair here and a dark oak up down corner stair to both sides of that stair We'll follow that with a smooth sandstone top slab, then a birchwood sign coming off the side of the top slab here to both sides. And we then want to place down one, two, and three dark oak wood slabs forward. On these last two slabs we just placed, we're going to go ahead and place down dark oak wood signs on the sides of those two blocks. So like that. And we then want to go ahead and place down a additional uh, one, two, three dark oak wood slabs. And then we're going to go ahead and switch to a polished blackstone slab on the very tip here of your main gun. After that, going ahead and moving back from along our turret here, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood up sound stair to both sides of that green terracotta. And then we're going to place down a zombie head coming off the side of that stair, again on both sides here. We're going to go ahead and take our green terracotta and we're going to place down a row of five across. And we'll then go ahead and grab our green stained glass panes and place down a green stained glass pane to both sides. We'll place down one more pane going back on both sides and then another row of five green terracotta across the center. Along the sides here of the tank now, we'll take our mossy cobblestone walls. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five. And same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five. We'll then again fill the inside in here with green terracotta. So this we can just get again filled in completely. Then we're going to take our dark oak wood stairs. We're going to place down an upside down stair here to both sides. Row three of green terracotta across. And then a dark oak wood top slab. Um, or actually rather, instead of the top slab, it's actually going to be a zombie head to the sides here of these stairs. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down another row 
of uh, f or actually sorry, a row of five of dark ochre top slabs, and then a zombie head again to both sides. We will want to go ahead and grab ourselves some of this polished um, deep slate, and underneath these five blocks here, we are actually going to go ahead and replace the green terracotta blocks for the deep slate blocks like that for our venting, and then we're just going to go ahead and place down a row of five of slabs here. And that row of five underneath those blocks really isn't too necessary, but if you kind of peek in there a little bit, you can see in there. So I just want to go ahead and make sure that we have that vent all the way under there as well. Then to the sides here, we're going to place down a dark liquid slab. We then want to go ahead and place down another row of five of this uh, polished deep slate. And then we're going to go ahead and then switch over to our daylight detectors. We're going to place down one, two. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a row of five across, and then one, two over here on this side. After that is all done, we're going to go ahead and take our dark liquid slabs. And we're going to go ahead and place down uh, one and two slabs here, one, two, and then a green carpet there in the center. And after that is all done there, that is going to wrap up everything there is there for layer number four for the build. At this point in time for Java players, we will go ahead and now type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And by pressing enter, we will get this glowing stick. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and go to these pistons. We'll go ahead and left click them until we get selected extended false pop up as a prompt. We'll then right click the pistons to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. And what it does is it helps with our shaping here and our flow of the build. So again, if you did the piston technique and you're on Java, that's what we're going to use to set those pistons to that height right there. And if you use the end portal frames, you're obviously good to go and don't need to use any kind of tooling for it. Anyways, though, that's it for this layer. Let's move on up to layer number five. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five for layer five to get started with here we're gonna place on a black carpet here then one two three green carpets back two dark oak trap doors a narrow green carpet here and then a birchwood trap door like so we're also gonna go and then place down a row of three of daylight detectors across like that and then a row of three of dark oak slabs across as well to the sides here we're gonna go and place down a zombie head this is gonna be about a 45 degree angle there on the corners of the turret and we then want to go ahead and grab our pistons and we're gonna place down a row of five of pistons going all the way across Again, instead of the pistons, you could use the alternative of uh, an end portal frame as well. Uh, so just make sure to keep that in mind there. Anyways, once we get to this point, on the left side here, we're going to place down a green terracotta block. And then we're going to go and then place down four pistons over to the right side. On both sides, we're going to go and place down a mossy cobblestone wall. So one wall here and one wall on this side. We'll also go ahead and grab ourselves item frames and also a black bed. And we're going to place down an item frame here and a black bed in the item frame like so which would be these little slits that the smoke grenade dispensers would eject from. We're going to go then take our green terracotta. We're going to place down another row of five going across like so. This is going to be followed with a zombie head on both ends. After that, we're going to place down a second row of five across, and then again, the zombie head on both ends. We then want to place down uh, a third row of five going all the way across, and then this is going to be followed up with a glass pane on the side here like so. Our next row is going to be a row of five of shulker boxes, again a green stained glass pane to the sides. Then another row of five of shulker boxes across, again a green stained glass pane to both ends. Then we want to place down a row of five of green terracotta, green stained glass pane again to the sides here. And then we want to go ahead and then place down another row of five like that of green terracotta across, this time a mossy cobblestone wall on both ends. Now, after we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then do this kind of um, rack system here. And it's pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and go off of this mossy cobblestone wall, one, two, and three of these um, iron bars back. And then we want to go ahead and then go off this green terracotta block, one, two, three, back like that. So it's a little bit offset. And then we're just going to go ahead and connect the two lines together with a row going all the way across like so. Now we're going to go ahead and then place down a zombie head coming off the center green terracotta block there of our turret. And then to the side here, um, we're going to go and then place down a row of end rods. So it's going to be one and two end rods. Now, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and really fill this in quite nicely. Um, you have a couple options here. You can go ahead and use item frames. Uh, what's cool about the item frames is that on Java, we can place them underneath the end rods and the skeleton's cool, or the zombie head, I should say. And then we can place down the iron bars in them like so. Now, if you're on a different version other than Java, I would recommend using iron trap doors or oak wood trap doors to kind of fill this in. Um, if you are using those trapdoors, I probably would get rid of this end rod as um, it's not a major detail piece and can easily be removed. So I would recommend probably getting rid of that uh, to fit a nice kind of base here to this, or to this rack in. Um, but anyways, though, that is going to pretty much sum up this layer here. I don't think there's anything else really for us to touch at this point in time. So that is going to conclude what we have here for 
layer number uh, five of the build. And with that, let's move into our last final layers, layer six through 10. All right, guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers six through 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and first start off by going ahead and grabbing a spruce wood slab. We're going to place down a spruce wood slab that's going to go right here in this spot here, followed by a zombie head here, here, and here around for the companion scopola. We're also going to place down a green terracotta block right here, and then a green stingless pane going back from it. If you are a Java player, we can also go ahead and use our debug stick here on this glass pane, and we can go ahead and left-click it until we get our selected directions here. By pressing F3 and looking in a direction, we want to extend our glass pane to the sides. So this way here would be facing toward the east. So we can go ahead and left-click this until we get selected east, and we can right-click it, set to true, and it will actually extend in that direction without needing a block connected to it. And we'll just do the same thing for the west to kind of make that all the way across there. And then on top of this, we're just going to place down a zombie head like that for that little camera there. With that done, we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves a dark oak wood fence gate, as well as a lever. And we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate here, open it up toward the slab, and then we're going to place down a lever on both ends. After we have that done, we're going to come back to that a little bit later, and we'll finish off our gun. Uh, we're going to save that for a little bit later in the tutorial. Uh, we're going to go ahead and also place down two dark oak wood slabs on top of these two green terracotta blocks here. And then directly behind that, we want to go ahead and place down a spruce wood uh, slab, and then a redstone repeater with a notch to spread apart, like so. Uh, continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a lever here, and then a lever here, so it's these two levers facing toward each other. Then we want to place down two spruce wood trapdoors on this right side, and then grabbing dark oak wood buttons, we're going to go ahead and very simply just place down a row of dark oak wood buttons across the back there, like so. We'll go ahead and then grab some dark oak wood fence posts, and we're going to place down two fence posts on top of the zombie head here on the back, and then one fence post on top of the mossy cobblestone walls to the side. Going up from these fence posts here, we're going to go up one, two, three, and four iron bars. And same thing over here, one, two, three, four for our radio antenna like that on the back of the tank. Now, once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and basically focus our attention now to the machine gun. The machine gun here, we will need a dark oak wood fence gate, an anvil, redstone repeater, polished blackstone stair, a zombie head, a dark oak wood slab, dark oak wood sign, the powered rail, a end rod, and also a chain. For this, we're going to place down our anvil on top of the fence gate, so like so. Polished blackstone up downstairs going forward, an end rod, and then a chain like that forward. We're also going to place down a redstone repeater here, and we're going to separate the notches from each other like so. Also on the back here, uh, we want to go ahead and grab a dark oak wood fence gate, uh, which we'll just grab from over here real quick. And we're going to place down this fence gate here coming off the back here on the anvil and opened up toward it. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a zombie head here to the side of the stair. And on the other side here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood top slab, which is going to have dark oak wood signs wrapped around these four sides, as well as a powered rail on top of that top slab. After that is all done there, that is going to basically wrap that up there. And the very last thing for us to do is for us Java players is to go ahead and pull out our debug stick. And we'll just go ahead and right click all these pistons like so and get rid of that wood portion to help with our front sloping there of the tank. After we have that all done though, that is going to complete my design here for the Type 10 uh, Japanese main battle tank. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. Like me anything from a sound the build to a link to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you are free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been here at 2x4 and I'll see you guys next time.